Hey, how's everybody doing? Um, wanted to record a video to show how OmniNet fails over, really the OmniWAN part of OmniNet, which is the SD-WAN, fails over from a regular landline to a failover, which is LTE. And I'll kind of explain the setup that I have here. But basically, I have an, uh, an LTE external device, which OmniNet does sell as a service. Uh, which is it's connected through AT&T and I have it connected to uh, to an Omni bridge. Let me explain to you exactly what the setup is and then I'll demonstrate the failover. So over here we have I have my computer here, which is connected to this monitor as well. And I have a Hangouts uh, live chat going on with uh, this uh, tablet over here. Now this tablet is connected to a different Wi-Fi, not this not the same one that this laptop is connected to. And uh, I have this laptop connected to this Omni bridge right here. And then this Omni bridge in port one, I have it connected to my primary internet connection, uh, which is a spectrum here. And I have my secondary one over here, the green one, which is connected to the AT&T LT device. So on my screen, and, and you can see the video is looking pretty good. It's going across the primary spectrum one here. And over here, what I have is I have my OmniWAN tab pulled up here on uh, for this Omni bridge. And you can see port one here, uh, it's active and port two is active. It's currently using this one here. So over here, I have a ping going on and the ping is uh, um, it's, it's pretty good. This is going across spectrum. I got a pretty low latency going to quad one um, around 20 milliseconds there. Uh, and uh, this is where the video is going. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna fail it over and you could watch the failover. You can see where it happens and the impact of it as it does. And then you'll see also the latency on here jump up. Now I do wanna caveat that, that this is the most abrupt and noticeable type of failover or failure that you can have with, with uh, OmniWAN uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one is that LTE standby, we don't monitor that as rigorously, right? So the failover does take a little bit longer than if you had an active active. The other reason is that you're going from a 20 millisecond uh, up to probably around 150. It depends, it ranges from 100 to 200, uh, but it jumps up quite a bit in latency. So that difference in latency will also cause a little bit of a, of a stutter in the video. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and get that done and you'll see what happens. Now, as I'm doing this, I'll kind of wave around and, and keep talking so you can see uh, what happens and also watch the, um, watch the ping there as well. So here I am waving and I'm pulling the plug now. You can kind of see it froze there for a second as I was talking. And so now I'm going across the LTE. You can see I missed one ping here. And now we're um, we're actually actually it's a lot worse than I thought. It's a, it's a, around the 200 mark. I had a few over there that spiked pretty high. So at and is not having its best day for the failover. But nevertheless, you can see that I'm still live. I'm working and the video is working just fine. It had a little bit of a freeze there for for a split second as it failed over. Now over here, I'm going to refresh. And this is all going across the LT, by the way. And you can see now that this has a red status, which is down. That's the primary one. And uh, we are now going across this LTE circuit here. So let me go ahead and plug this back in. And it takes approximately seven seconds for it to sync back up and get the tunnel established. And you'll see that up here on the, um, on the screen here as soon as that happens there. And it'll fail back over. So there you go, failed back. We're at around 20 milliseconds again, and the video didn't experience any kind of an eruption or anything, it failing back to the primary circuit. Now, the failover happens when I pull the plug, but also if it was degraded um, up to a certain amount, um, the default one that we have is um, around 10% packet loss. So if it's below 10% packet loss, it'll try to correct the issue. It does a lot of things to try to um, still keep that circuit active, the primary one active, and it'll try to reduce that packet loss as much as possible. But as soon as it hits that threshold um, and it's done a couple of things to try to adjust it, it'll and it's above 10% packet loss, it just will fail over to LT until it gets back below that threshold again. Um, that's, that's kind of the the simplified version of, of the very extensive algorithm that's used at, at play here. Well, if you have any questions, uh, uh, feel free to, uh, to put them in the chat there or email us sales at omninet.io um, and leave your comments below. Subscribe for more videos. Thank you.